Today, we're going to talk about Mark Sweep Garbage Collection. This video is going to be divided into three parts. First, we're going to talk about how Mark Sweep Garbage Collection works. Then we're going to examine the kind of information that Mark Sweep Garbage Collection needs to operate correctly. And finally, we're going to discuss the performance of Mark Sweep. Let's get started. Mark Sweep Garbage Collection is perhaps the most natural method of garbage collection you can think of because it directly ties back to the definition of dead and alive objects. Remember that an object is alive if it's reachable from a non-heap reference. Mark Sweep Garbage Collection works by first finding all of the non-heap references. We'll call these roots. Once we have these roots, we'll start a phase called pointer chasing, where we follow any references and any heap objects we encounter. As we go through these objects, we mark them. This is where the mark in Mark Sweep comes from. After there are no more references to follow, we enter the sweeping phase, where we iterate through all the objects on the heap and garbage collect any objects that are not marked. In a funny way, Mark Sweep Garbage Collection actually collects garbage indirectly by first finding all the objects that are alive and then classifying any other objects as garbage. Here is some code for the Mark Sweep Garbage Collection algorithm. Let's go through the Mark Phase code first. The first thing we need to do is bootstrap our algorithm by putting all the objects that are referenced by the roots into the work list. Remember that roots is another name for non-heap references. These are the references that program code will use to reference objects on the heap and they're the only ones directly accessible from user code. From this point on, the work list is going to contain all the objects that we need to process. Also, all the objects in our work list are going to be already marked. While the work list still has objects in it, we're going to take each object and look for reference field. If there is a reference field, that means it references another object. Let's call this the child object. If the child object is not already marked, then we'll mark it and add it to the work list. This process continues until there are no more objects in the work list, which means that we have marked all the reachable objects. The sweep phase is more straightforward. All we do is iterate through all of the objects and free any objects that are not marked. In this context, free means to release object memory for reallocation. Looking at this code, one might recognize that there are a lot of functions and variables that seem to lack definitions. For example, look at the variable roots. In this case, I assume that roots is a list of non-heap references that the user has access to. But where did this information come from and who is responsible for keeping it? It turns out that it's the collector's responsibility to keep track of this information. In general, the more pieces of information that a collector needs to keep track of, the more overhead the runtime collector imposes on the program code. This means that the less information a collector needs to perform correctly, the better. We already mentioned that mark sweep requires knowledge of the roots. Root information can be kept by adding to the roots list every time a user allocates a piece of memory and removing from the roots list every time a root goes out of scope. We also have this function, find reference fields. This function examines an object to find any reference members. For example, consider the following class declaration in Java. Here, we declare a class student, and each student has an integer unique identifier and a reference to their best friend, who is another student. A student object might look like this on the heap. We have the unique ID and the reference to their best friend. Find reference fields needs to be able to look at this object and figure out that this best friend field is a reference so that it can be returned to our garbage collection algorithm. But since computers work in numbers, behind the scenes, our picture might look more realistically like this. Notice how now it's kind of difficult for the collector to tell that a UID is an integer while a best friend is a reference, since they're both numbers. To make this problem easy, Mark sweep collectors need to keep the type information about the objects on the heap, meaning that the members of every object are annotated with their type, which allows find reference fields to easily tell what is a reference and what is not. Lastly, we have this get all objects function. Again, this function needs to be supported by the collector and runtime. This means that the collector must keep track of all objects that are allocated so we can iterate through them during get all objects. In general, Mark Sweep has pretty good throughput. 
meaning that if you look at an overall run of the program, collection doesn't take up too much time. However, this comes at a cost. Mark Sweep is known as a stop the world garbage collector. This means that when collection is happening, the mutator thread, aka program code, is totally stopped. In general, stopping the world is undesirable as it can result in unpredictable performance due to unanticipated collection which stops the program code. There is an approach to minimizing this stop the world time. It turns out that the sweep phase of our algorithm can actually occur concurrently with our mutator code running. This is because once an object is marked as garbage, there is actually no need to collect it before the mutator starts again, since it's not free for reallocation yet, and by definition, the mutator cannot access the garbage objects. Thus, the sweep phase of the collector can run at the same time as the mutator without worrying about accidentally accessing the same data. In general, mark sweep is a simple garbage collection scheme that looks for live objects to mark, then sweeps up all the unmarked objects. It's a great first algorithm for us to look at because it's straightforward both to explain and understand. In our next video, we're going to be looking at Mark Sweep's brother, the Mark Compact Garbage Collector. As always, thanks for watching.